Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna do a quick guide on how to farm gold in Morganheim on legendary mode with a regalia mage. Now, my regalia mage is actually set up for trials, and I don't actually have a, um, a gold vine set for regalia mage, so I'll just adjust some things here. I'll bring my champion level down to 1450, and I've got some trinkets in here that uh, don't have super high stats, as you can see. Uh, except for this ring here. I'm gonna need the vitality on this ring to survive in legendary mode. And then I'll go ahead and grab some weaker weapons as well. bring my stats down so that I can sort of emulate a gold find mage. These are reasonable stats for a gold find mage. Except for of course you'd have more gold find. Ideally, you'd be running some trinkets like these, with much higher stats. But of course, not everybody has that, so I'll just bring these. Oh, uh, my build, I forgot to mention. Uh, you're going to want to bring Arc Lightning, Frostbolt, Immolate, Frost Nova, Blink, definitely Fleet Footed, Glass Cannon, and Power Infusion. And what we're trying to do here is we want to get, it says casting a fire support ability deals 3000 weapon damage to all creatures around the caster that are frozen and removes their frozen effect. We want to get that to proc on basically on every enemy on the screen and try to kill them instantly. And with Frostbolt, um, Frost Nova has a 100% chance to trigger Northern Wind when you deal damage with it. That makes it so that all enemies around you, which basically it's a huge radius, um, it extends beyond the edge of the screen, they all appear to be, or they'll all have the frozen effect that'll allow us to proc this Igneous Pillar of Flame, or sorry, the Grand Magister set bonus. Start off by running past all these enemies in the initial area, and up this ramp, then aggro all these enemies on this platform, and cast Frost Nova, followed by Immolate. That deals massive damage to all the enemies on the screen, and even some enemies outside of the visible range on the screen. You know, just keep repeating that process until everything is dead. And run up here, kill the boss, and grab these chests, and then collect all your loot. So I like to skip all of the chests because it is actually more efficient. If you're opening the chests, they have about the same chance of dropping um, gemstones as an, a common enemy, right? And there are hundreds of enemies to kill doing this. You can see there's just tons of enemies here, uh, but there are only, I think, seven chests, common chests, and then there's these two at the end here, which are a little bit better. They have better loot. Um, and of course you're going to want to open those because you're going to be standing right next to them when you end the level anyway. But running around getting the other chests significantly increases the, the time it takes to complete the run. And it really only adds extra gold and some gray items for the most part. You're not going to get a lot of stuff out of those chests. Uh, you, you'd only be opening them just for the gold that they drop. 
but when you're running a booster, it gives you a gold find bonus as well as a gem find bonus. So you don't want to waste that. You want to get as many gems as you can during the duration of that booster. Therefore, we're just going to kill the enemies, run to the end, and open these chests and then collect the loot. It should bring your runs down to about 40 seconds. Tyrannosaur on the Making Fun forum actually did a detailed comparison of the, these runs with and without the chests, and it seems pretty conclusive that it's more efficient to run without the chests. I hope you found this guide helpful, and I'll see you in my next video.